do let's make, then I would choose a song or a game that has the word let's lots and lots of times, right? Or I would choose a song that's all present tense or all past tense, right? That's what I might do. So uh, today we're doing some of these, these verb tense. Now, I have to tell you something. So uh, I do a lot of teacher training and I'm gonna say some things today that for you, for your students in the future, but today is really about talking to teachers. So when you hear me say teacher to teacher, I'm talking to you not as a person doing this conference, doing this, this uh, presentation, I'm talking to you as another teacher. And I might say, you know, if I were the teacher, this sounds like a good idea, but I wouldn't want to do it. Or if you've been teaching as long as I have, you go to a conference and you hear an idea and you think, oh my gosh, there's no way that would work with my students. But if I changed one part, if I made it a game, if I made cards, if I put it online, all these different options that you're going to hear, maybe you're able to take some of these ideas and change it a little bit. Now, today I'm my, I have two objectives, two goals today. One is to talk about verb tenses, and the other is to do this on Zoom. So um, I'm sure, you know, I'm not sure if you guys are teaching right now, maybe not, but when you, when you go back, will you have face-to-face -face classes? We don't know. I mean, my classes don't start until September, and here nobody knows what's going to happen. There are predictions. Predictions are easy to make, okay? <laughs> but nobody really knows what's going to happen. So today I'm going to talk about ideas that will work um, using online instruction. If you are not doing online instruction in September, in October, in November, then maybe the ideas I'm going to show you, no, no, maybe, but these ideas can be used live face-to-face. -face. But today I'm assuming that we're all teaching something about verb tenses online, all right? So, um, what I'm gonna do, what I'd like to do first, first of all, um, in the chat box, can you type yes or no, or, or give me a number. How many times have you ever taught a class using Zoom? So today we're using Zoom as our platform. So, so I've, probably taught about, I've probably taught about 30 classes. So if you could, in the chat box there, if you would, just type type a number, how many classes have you taught using Zoom? I don't see anybody teach, anybody typing. Can everybody see the chat box? Oh, there we go. So 30, zero, okay, 30. So far our two most common answers are 30 and zero, okay. All right, the zeros are winning, the zeros are winning, okay. All right, let's keep trying, see what you get. All right, so what's gonna happen is, I'm sure a lot of people will put zero. If you had asked me this question one year ago, before the virus, one year ago, my answer for teaching a class with Zoom would be zero, all right? Now, if you think about this for a minute, um, the question I asked you was, how many classes have you taught using Zoom? So a question also we could ask is, how many classes have you been, okay, new question, everybody. How many classes have you been a student in a Zoom class? Now, don't count today. I mean a, a real class. When you were in high school, when you were in the university, did you ever have a teacher training? Not one hour, but the you know, semester. Did anybody have a class where you were a student in Zoom? I suppose the answer here is going to be no. And so one of my second objective today, first objective is verb tenses. My second objective today is for you to experience Zoom as a student because it's very difficult to teach with, this is just how I feel. It's very difficult for me to teach with something effectively if I have never received it, right? So for example, if I have never, if I have never been on an airplane and you know, and you know that the flight attendant who gives you the food and the safety. If I have never been an, uh, um, a passenger on an airplane, then I, I cannot say I want to be a flight attendant because I like that job. If I have never eaten in a restaurant, if I have never seen a server give food in a restaurant, how can I say I want to be a server in a restaurant? My point is, all of us, when you were in school from first grade until high school, 12 years, all of us, 12 years, we were studying to be a teacher indirectly because every day 
we watched one teacher or two teachers or three, I had three teachers some years, I watched three teachers teach me. And so indirectly, I learned things that teachers did that I liked and I didn't like. So today I wanna show you Zoom a little bit, all right? So what I'm gonna to attempt to do is, let's see if we can share one of these things right now. All right, so I will try this, sorry guys. All right, let's try this one. So let's go to screen, share screen. All right, put that down for a second and share screen. Bear with me, everybody. Here we go. Share screen and now you can see my screen. All right, here's one, one thing I've learned. What color is my background here? You see it's very black, very gray. I mean, not, not my photo, but the background of my computer. And so one advice, one piece of advice I will give you is when you are teaching a class with Zoom or anything you're using, make sure that your computer screen, the background is dark, as dark as possible. Now I wear glasses, right? And I don't have hair, this is shiny. If the screen is white and beautiful with a beach or sun, then there's all this light coming on my face. The only reason I'm a little bit dark right now is because the screen is dark. If the screen is white, that light is coming directly on me, all right? That's one trick. And if you wear glasses, a white screen is horrible because it reflects and there's no way, you can move your glasses a little bit, there's no way to remove that reflection, all right? But what I wanna do is I wanna go to this screen here. All right, uh, here we go. Okay, can everybody see this one? Joel, how are we doing there? Can everybody see this? It says practice with verb tenses. Thumbs up, anybody? Thumbs down? No? Okay, thank you, Pili. All right, Pili, you're the assistant today. All right, I'll just, I'll just send you half my check when this is over, okay? You take dollars. Uh, yeah, okay, good. Okay, thank you. Okay, good. <laughs> okay, so what I'm doing right, right now right. Is, is not something for your students. This is not for students. This is for teachers. Now, in English, there are 12 verb tenses. So we have, you know, simple present, simple past, simple future, and then we have the perfect, we have past perfect, present perfect, future perfect. Uh, we have uh, progressive, right? Continuous. In, in, in uh, American English, Canadian English is called present progressive, <clears throat> excuse me, and in British English is called present continuous. Same thing, am going, right? Am eating, are doing. So there's present progressive, past progressive, and then future progressive. Then there's the combination, present perfect progressive, have been going. Now, I'm gonna do a review very quickly here, very quickly. And I'm not gonna do all of this, I'll just do some of these, okay? So what's gonna happen is, I will show you, um, I will show you a sentence. So this one says, she's been working there since the end of last June. And then what I want you to do is, you don't need to say anything, you don't need to type it. Find the verb. The verb in this sentence has three words. And so what's my verb gonna be? The verb will be, sorry, oh, I gotta just click it. Uh, has been working. What verb tense is has been working? She has been working there since the end of last June. And the answer is present perfect progressive. Or if you're using a British English book, present perfect continuous, same thing. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna show you seven or eight examples like this. And Joel, I'm happy to share this PowerPoint with you and you can give the teachers. But remember, this is not, this is not for students. Now, I teach two kinds of students. I teach students who are learning English and I teach future teachers. This is a, is a PowerPoint, a short PowerPoint. I'm gonna do two today. This is a very short one. I, this is a PowerPoint that I use with my future teachers because the teacher needs to know this. I'm not saying you teach all of this. I'm just saying there are 12 verb tenses in English and at the very least, you should be able to identify the verb and the verb tense because you're the teacher, all right? Let's try another one. Through their hard work, these globetrotters, the 50 most powerful business women, are taking on the world. What's your verb? Verb has two words, are taking, right? And what tense is that? And for that one, you should say present progressive or present continuous. Now these sentences are not easy ones, these sentences are real sentences. I didn't write these. These are real things that I grabbed from the internet. All right, try another one here. Now, three years later, Egypt greets the dawn of the anniversary with bombs and police violence. 
it was the it was the anniversary of some violence from a year ago, two years ago, three years ago. Now find the verb. This is an easy one, I think. We only had, the verb only has one word. The word is greets, and the verb tense is simple present. All right. Let's just do three or three more. We'll stop. I'll let you do this one. Find the verb. All right, what's the verb? Should be will turn. And the verb tense of this is, this is an easy one, I hope, simple future. All right, now it's a long sentence. So for some students, this is, uh, how is it possible to have 37 words and only have one verb? It's very possible. All right, the US is advising airlines with direct flights to Russia of the possibility of explosive materials in toothpaste or cosmetic tubes. This is a very uh, negative uh, <laughs> PowerPoint today, sorry. We have some other examples coming. What's the verb? The verb is gonna be is advising, and that's gonna be present progressive, all right? Where does John live? I wrote this one, okay? <laughs> Where does John live? The verb has two words, does live, and that's the question form for simple present tense. All right, again, I'm happy to share this PowerPoint with all of you as teachers. This is not what you use with your students. I would not use it with my students. And a Panama example. Panamanian authorities had originally imposed a $1 million fine, right, multa, right, on North Korea over the shipment. So some company in North Korea sent something to Panama that they weren't supposed to send and the Panamanian government um, decided to make them pay a million dollars because of this, like a penalty. What's the verb? The verb should be had imposed. And what tense is that? Past perfect. All right, last one. According to the TV report just now, it's snowing in downtown Los Angeles at this very moment. At this very moment means like now, 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 super now. What's the verb? The verb has two words, not one word, two words. The verb is, the is snowing. And what verb tense is that? And that would be present progressive. Now, just to show you, there are more coming. There are many others here. And there are maybe 30 examples here. So this is something I use with teachers uh, to, um, uh, if, if you like cats better than dogs, I'm sorry. It's just an example, okay? So uh, maybe, maybe cats are okay too. I don't know. Um, but the point is uh, there are about 30 examples for he you here to, to look at, okay? So let me, stop, let me stop this PowerPoint. All right, put that one down. And let's go to the other PowerPoint for today. All right, and Joe, I need you to tell me if, if people are able to see this one or not. Sometimes when I change it out, it doesn't work so well. Can everybody see this one okay? Joel, is that a yes or a no? Yes, yes, we have yes. Okay, yes. Okay, thanks. Yes, okay. yes, yes, right. yes, yes, yes. Thanks, Joel, thanks you. So, okay, everybody, here's what. There are 12 verb tenses in English. So there are two things that for a teacher. One is the teacher needs to know the tenses. You need to know two things, form and function. Form, what does it look like and function? What do you do with this, right? So let me give an example from Spanish. I studied Spanish, so I'm gonna learn Spanish and I need to give me a verb in Spanish. Today's verb is gonna be hablar. Hablar means to speak in English, and I want to learn hablar, but in present. Well, in English, how do you do it? It's easy. I speak, you speak, he speaks, she speaks, it speaks, we speak, you speak, they speak. Eight or nine possibilities, only two words. Speak, speaks. In English, it's pretty easy. You have the verb from the dictionary, like how do you say comer? Look in the dictionary, eat, that tells me eat, eat. How do you say, how do you say um, what? Um, Practicar, practicar is practice, practice, and put an S, practices. But come to Spanish, wow, Span I know everybody says, oh, English is so difficult. Allow me to share my pain learning Spanish with you. So in Spanish, hablar, I speak, and then he speaks, that's it. In Spanish, for a, a non-native speaker like me, hablo, hablas, habla, hablamos, hablaron. My gosh, you got five. I'm not doing hablais, I don't do Spain because I'm not going to Spain. I'm going to Panama, going to Mexico. So there are five. So 
I know you think, oh my gosh, this is so difficult. And the students are saying, it's so difficult. When your students say it's so difficult, I would tell them in Spanish, let's, let's, look, at what, let's look at what English speakers have to do when they come to Spanish. You have two things to learn, speak, speaks, go, goes, eat, eat. And it's easy, put an S. Even the irregular verb like, like be is is, is has an S. Has, not, not H-A-V-E-S, H-A-S. They all end in S for he, she, it. And in English, in Spanish, oh my gosh, you have the, uh, the like, like hablar y practicar. You have the A-R verbs, but then you have the E-R verbs like comer. So comer becomes como, comes, come, come, oh my gosh. So I have to learn five more. And then you have the E, like the uh, the E-R, like, like reír. And when you have the E-R, you don't use five new ones. You use the same five from the A-R verbs. Oh my gosh. So it's really, really a lot harder in Spanish to do simple present tense in English. I tell you this only because when students say, oh my gosh, this English is really crazy. No, every language is crazy in its own unique way. So certain parts of Spanish are more difficult than English and certain parts of English are more difficult than in Spanish. I'm the, I agree with you 100%. But our students who are starting with English, it's difficult. They think this is some crazy language. It's so hard. Uh, it's this mystery. So I, I have no problem if I'm speaking, if I'm teaching all Spanish speakers or all French speakers or all Japanese speakers, I have no problem using Spanish in class to explain this situation to them. So those are the 12 verb tenses. Uh, but we're not going to talk about teaching 12 of them today because some of them are useless. So it turns out that the two most common verb tenses in English are simple present and simple past. And so how common? Well, if you take simple present and you take simple past, and then you have the modals, can go, should go, must go, right, might go, which is seven or eight words, simple present and simple past and the modals uh, together are 89% of every verb that comes out of your mouth in English or on a piece of paper in academic writing. So yes, there are other verb tenses that are, comp that are a little bit common, like present progressive. In English, or any, even in Spanish, progressive tenses are common in conversations because conversations are usually about what you did, what did you do for lunch today, what you're doing right now, or what you're going to do tomorrow. We don't use will so much in English. And in Spanish, you don't use future so much. I don't hear people say, Man mañana iré a la tienda. No, mañana voy a ir. That's what I hear. I hear voy a. In English, the same thing. We use I'm gonna, I'm going to, a lot more than will. So my point is, 89% is the same as 90%. Now think about this. Nine out of every 10 verbs are simple present, simple past, or the modal. May go, uh, might go, should go, uh, must go, right? So today, I chose to talk about simple past tense. And that's what I'm going to talk about in today's presentation. So simple past tense, what does it look like? What does it look like? So here's what it looks like. There are two ways to do this. Same in Spanish, you have regular past tense and you have irregular past tense. So what does regular look like in, in, in English? You put ED. Oh my gosh, how easy. What does Spanish do? Allow me to show you how bad Spanish is for non-native speakers. You remember our good verb, hablar? Look what happens with hablar. So in, in English, what do I, well, suppose the word is talk. You put talk with ED, ED, everything's ED, right? And then what happens in, in Spanish? You've got hablé, hablaste, habló, hablamos, hablaron. Oh my gosh, I got five new ones. This is horrible for, for a non-native speaker, okay? And then you go to the er and the e er uh, verbs, and they use a different one. Comí, uh, it's not come, it's comí. Why? Because it is. English is a lot easier here, a lot. In English, you put ed, or you don't put ed. So an example of no ed might be something like uh, take. Take will change to took. And you say, oh my gosh, this is so crazy. It doesn't look like that. Take and took, well, they have a T and a K, but the AE becomes, oh, oh, that's so crazy. English is crazy. You want to know crazy? Crazy is Spanish where boy changes to fui. Somebody please explain that the V and the O and the Y became an F, a U, and an I. And also, fui is the past tense of soy. So 
how can soy and boy have the same past tense? So welcome to how difficult Spanish is for non-native speakers. Now here's what I want you to think about. In a moment, I'm gonna put everybody, hey Joel, how many people do we have here today, roughly? Did I lose Joel? Joel, Joel, I don't, you there? All right, I'll find out in a moment. Okay, so in a moment, I'm gonna put everybody, I got 28, thank you. Um, so 28, in a moment, I'm gonna put everybody in groups because I wanna demonstrate Zoom for you. So how do we have people do conversation practice? If I were teaching a class that had 28 people, I can put people in 14 pairs. In the real world, face-to-face -face class, okay, you go with you and you with you and you. I wanna be with my friend, okay, you and you, no, you come here. It takes me maybe five minutes, maybe three or four minutes to put people in groups. On Zoom, it takes 30 seconds. I can put 500 people in groups like that. In the real world, I can't do that. So actually, Zoom does some things better. And so for me, putting people in groups is, the best, is one of the best things that it does. So in a moment, I'm going to put you in a group. And here's what I want you to think about. You see right now it says regular verbs. I need one example. So imagine you're teaching your class right now, and your class doesn't know past tense. This is the first time they're seeing the ED. And you're teaching ED to them. And you can choose any verb in the English language that uses ED. So for example, eat and take. Uh, you know, a kick and cut cannot go here because those are irregular, right? So I want you to think of it of if you could choose, you're the teacher, and you're going to put one verb there, what verb will you put? So before you answer that, um, let me show you something here. Sorry, click again. All right, what's your one example going to be? Now imagine I'm not a very experienced teacher. I'm new, and I chose this. I chose the word avoid, and I chose the word choose. Now, avoid, Spanish, evitar, right? So avoid is a good example. Well, no, it's not good. It's a correct example. Don't confuse correct with good for a beginning learner. Now, imagine if I'm a student in your class and I'm trying to learn English and you're, you're introducing ED to me today the very first time. And then what happens here? When you introduce the ED, you write on the word, the board, the word avoid. And I'm like, avoid? What is avoid? And you say, Look in your dictionary, and I check, or you tell me, you say, it means evitar. And I'm thinking, seriously? You mean, that's what you're teaching me? How many times, or you guys speak Spanish, in the last week, in the last month, how many times did you say evite? Evitaste, evitaste la clase, evitaste. How, did you say that? Evito, evitamos, evitaron. I didn't, in English, I don't talk about avoid. It's a word, it's a real word. It's just not a common word in conversation. And even if you pick up a textbook, if you go to Wikipedia and read about animals or science, it's still not a common verb. My point is, when you're gonna introduce a grammar point, think about the vocabulary that you will choose. Avoid is a, it's a, it's a, it's a correct word, it's just a bad first word. When I'm teaching, I want students to be uh, interested in the class. I want them to want to participate. So the students have to believe, really have to believe that what I'm introducing about English is common English. It will help them speak English. And avoid is not helping anybody. Now the word choose becomes chose. I think chose is a better example of irregular than avoid is a better example of regular. But choose, chose, it's still not a, it's still not a very, it's, it's not a great selection, all right? So, escogí, escogiste, no, come on. It, don't, don't confuse the two. It's a word. It's a real word. Both of these are correct. It's just not very useful for me as, in grammar. So here's what I want you guys to do. Everybody, please, can you do me a favor? Take your phone and take a photo. Take a photo right now of, of this. If you will please take a photo, all right? So you're taking a photo here, right? All right, let's see. I need to go to participants and um, let's just see. I'm not seeing anybody. Everybody just sort of disappeared from me. Uh, oh, um, how do I do that? So keep We're taking here. a photo or you can, you can do a screenshot. You can do a screenshot there. That's a possibility also, whichever you would like to do. You can do a screenshot. All right. So if I do, what does this do? 
Nope. All right. So you've got the, everybody has a screenshot of hope, right? Or you got a screenshot or a camera. Why are we doing this? In a moment, I'm going to put you in groups. And here is one of the difficult things about one of the challenges, one of the problems about Zoom. In Zoom, when I put you in groups, here's what happens. When you're in groups, you cannot see me and you cannot see the classroom, the main classroom. The main classroom right now has a PowerPoint slide that says choose one uh, uh, for your example. But really, this is, this is, this is not going to be visible for you. How can I show it to students? One way is just tell students, take your phone and go ahead and make a, uh, take one quick snapshot of this, all right? So teachers, here's what I would like you to do. In a moment, I'm gonna put you in a group and probably there'll be three, two or three people in a group each time. And I would like you to work with your partner and decide you are gonna choose, you're only gonna be able to choose one of these, um, you're gonna be able to choose one of these verbs. So you are gonna be able to, um, this. You, it's your class, your whiteboard, your presentation. What is your verb for regular going to be? All right, and I'm gonna give you some choices. Will you choose play, add, wash, want, sign, rain, rob, die, study, need, cook, and show, all right? And let's see. All right, so I will tell you, here's my hint that three of these, all right, let's take it back here, all right, three of these, go back for a second, sorry guys, three of these are better than the other 17. All of these are possible. I'm not talking about what's possible. All of these are correct. They're all correct examples, but in my opinion, three of these are good candidates to be the, the first example, all right? So here's what I would like you to do. I have to, oh, sorry, I have to copy this. Uh, all right, we got that. So um, right now, here's our first task today. Your job as a teacher, not as a student, you're the teacher. You're planning your lesson. You're gonna choose one good verb to put on the whiteboard in class or in your Zoom board. So you're gonna go to a breakout room with five to eight people. Actually today, we're gonna be able to give you a smaller, sm small is better. Personally, I don't like to put more than three. More than three people in a room, when you have four people, it's too difficult to communicate. Remember, when you're in Zoom, it's when we're together physically, you can see I'm getting ready to talk. You can see me, right? So when you go to the breakout room, please turn your cameras on, everybody, please. Um, in fact, now go ahead and turn your cameras on if you would, just click on camera on. And I'm gonna put you in the breakout room. And so your job, I'm gonna give you maybe, uh, what, let's just say, I'll give you three minutes. Three minutes, you need to choose a, maybe one verb or two verbs or whatever you want, but choose verbs that are good because the vocabulary makes sense. Remember I had the word avoid, evitar. Who wants to learn evitar in the Spanish class? Not me. Uh, no, I want to evitar the Spanish class. That's what I want to do. I want to evitar that teacher who's a bad teacher for presenting the word avoid on day one. I, what do I know now? Pencil, book, avoid. That's crazy. Uh, pronunciation. Try to choose a word that's easy for Panamanian students that you teach to say. So for example, if you have the word, I don't know, a word like, well, you know, speak. Speak is difficult because some students say a speak, right? Or a word like ask. Ask with the S and the K, that's a hard combination. People remember new vocabulary in the beginning by how it sounds. If the sounds are difficult, all they remember is it's some word I don't know and it's difficult to say. I don't like English class, okay? And that's the teacher's fault because you gave them the word ask on day one. Don't, no, that's a, dif a difficult word. And then also there's no Spanish problem. So for example, sometimes people would say, I'm gonna teach the word, um, I don't know, the word uh, tomar in the Spanish class. Well, what does tomar mean? It means like sometimes it's take, sometimes it's eat, sometimes it's drink. So what do you mean, and remember, People who are beginning students of any language are not experienced learners. They all believe, initially, everybody believes one word has one meaning only. You know this, you teach a word and you tell the student this word means, like the word right, R-I-G-H-T, right. You say right means um, correcto, you know, uh, razón. Okay, 
And what about left and right? Oh, yeah, that's, uh, that's another right. Really? What about uh, the, uh, human rights, like the derechos humanos? Wow. Beginning people, beginning language learners do not like one word having multiple meanings. Now, it's a fact. Every language does it. Spanish does it. English does it. French, every language does this. One word has many meanings. But in the beginning, try to choose a word that the vocabulary is nice, the pronunciation is not hard for your students, and there's no problem because when, they, when, the, when your Panamanian student says, what does that mean in Spanish? And you tell them it means this. And somebody else says, but what about, what about if a student believes that word has three meanings? No, not going to be a good day. Not going to be a good day. All right. So here's what I'm going to do now. Here's your list one more time. Let's see. All right. There's your list, okay? I'm gonna put you guys in breakout rooms. So I'll give you three minutes, everybody. So, Joel, here goes everybody. All right. All right, so we're gonna go here to, sorry, where to go? More. Keith, Keith, yes. could, you, could you explain them what's gonna happen that they have to join the link that you are gonna sign? Oh yes, sure, I'm so sorry, so sorry. Okay, so what's gonna happen in a minute is, as soon as I can figure out where it is, I, Joel, I don't see my button right now. If you want... Um, it's crazy, where did it go? You, you have to stop uh, screen sharing. Oh, okay, all right, that's what's happening. Okay, cool, yeah, and now we got, yep, thank you, thank you. Joel, you saved me. Thank you. Okay, Pili, I'm sorry. I have to give some of your points to Joel now, okay? Pili, so you lost some points there. Sorry. Uh, all right, I'm going to put you guys in uh, 10 rooms. Let's do that really quickly. All right, I see you're going to do automatically, and the winner is 10. All right, everybody. So here's what's going to happen, everybody. You're gonna, you see me now, it's magic. In a moment, you will disappear, I will disappear. You will get a message that says, you have been invited to a breakout room. It's a, a separate little room, and you will be one of you with, there'll be two people or three people. Say yes, and you will go to the room. Make sure your sound is on, make sure your video is on, and in your group discuss, of those verbs, which one or two do you think is gonna be a good verb to teach on day one when you're first teaching this, okay? Good luck, everybody. I'll see you back in about three minutes. Hello, hello, hola. How are you? Hi, Professor. Hello, how are you? Anna Selena, can you hear me? Hi. Yes. Yes. Okay, let me move this. Let me do something here. Let me move this here. Okay. Um what where do you think you sh we should teach? Learn. Uh, we have. Uh, did you take a picture of the of the of the presentation that he shared? Yes. Yes. Which one? Um, I I see the here. Let me see here. Um. Play, add, watch, want, sign, train, rob, die, study, need, cook, show. If I, what I understood is that we, what we have to teach is something that we use, right? It's something that we use in our daily life. That's why I, what I understand. What do you think, Selena? About the verb that I use. Hmm? About the verb that I use in my daily day. Yeah, which one? Study. Study. Nora, what do you think? Um, study. Uh, meet. Okay. So let's see. I would say um, play or a study. Play or a study. Okay? Okay. All right. 
play or it's something that they do in their daily life in their you know in their routine what they do okay so let's see once we are back Selena, where are you from? I'm from uh, Gocle. Ah, you're More from... More specific, Anton. From Anton, one of the... You were one of the students granted the opportunity. Yes. Uh, I have a plan for Anton. We, are, we want to open a school in Anton. Um, where? A, where a exactly? A, a, a private school in Anton. For next year, yes. I didn't know. No, that, that's a plan that we have. We are in the. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that is a plan. Yeah. Let's see if that can come true. All right. Let's see, I think that in, sh in a short time, we're going to go back to the room. Uh, I, will, I will close here because I want to get a book to show the book that we use, okay? Okay.
if you and, and if you didn't know the answer, I hope your partner knew the answer, okay? So somebody knew the answer. Okay, so let's see, everybody's back now. We got that might a few more. Let's wait till two or three more. So on my screen, if again, so I I have taught, I've been teaching for 40 years. That's a crazy number, 40 years. I have never been a student in a Zoom class. So what happens is when a I wanted to know when the students go to the room, I, I, can, I can click a button and, and I can make 100 students go to 25 rooms. That's easy, but I don't know what's gonna happen when you get there. So what I wanted you to experience is when you were there. Now, several things. When you go to a Zoom, so for example, Zoom gives me a screen and the screen says, how many rooms do you want? So we have 28 people, to, say we have 30 people. 30 people, I like the number three, 30 divided by three would be 10. I just go click, 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 it gives me 10. You have 10 rooms, just like that. You go to the rooms, right? All of you received an invitation, a small screen, right? And it said, hey, you, and it had your name, Keith Foles or somebody invited you to this special room because we're all special today, okay? You go to the special room and then you say yes and you're there. Now, the time limit, so today I didn't have the time limit, but usually a, there will be a clock. Today I think you didn't, did you see a clock? Maybe, I don't, I don't know. I think maybe not today. Usually, well, I, I didn't set this correctly here, Joel, but if I put three minutes or two minutes, when you go to the room, you will see a clock and it says 200, 159, 158, 157, 150, it goes down, click, 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 click. Yeah. So my point is when students see that, they feel a little more pressure to get the job done quickly. When you teach online and you put people in groups, in uh, breakout rooms, please don't say 10 minutes, don't say five minutes. Give people a strange number, like three or seven or two minutes. And you know, even even face to face, I will tell the class, you have two minutes, I'm not doing two minutes. I'm saying two minutes and if they're having problems, then the two minutes becomes longer. If, if they're doing it well, if, every, if half the class already finished, well, I, we, I, if I don't stop the activity and half the class is finished, they will start speaking Spanish about the football game and I'm gonna lose the class, right? So good teaching is you kind, of, you kind of judge what's happening, but in Zoom, I can't judge, I can't see what everybody's doing. This is one difficulty about when people, 100 people go into the Zoom rooms, but um, what happens though is, uh, you can visit the rooms. Like there were eight rooms. I can visit the eight rooms. I visited two rooms just now. All right. So if I'm in the room, I was in a room with Pilar, for example. And when I was talking to Pilar, well, no, actually I was in a room with, uh, I don't remember who I was with, Eduardo. Eduardo and I forget who the partner was, but we were in a room, two of us, three Norma. of us. Norma. Norma. Yeah, Norma. Thank you, Norma. Yeah. Okay. Some points for Norma also. Okay. So Norma and Eduardo were in the room and there was a, one person who wasn't there. Why did I choose that room? because the third person wasn't there. They got disconnected. I saw a three, 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 two. Then maybe they need help, or maybe they want a third person. The teacher, what if you think, my students are gonna speak Spanish, they're not gonna pay attention to me. Then this is what you do. When you visit a room, first, mute yourself. If you look on your screen, if you move your mouse, you're on the bottom of your screen, there's a bar with options. The bottom, the bottom left side, will say mute and unmute. Well, before, teacher, if you, if you can hear my voice and you visit the room, as soon as I touch the room, they can hear, they hear click, click. They hear something that somebody's coming. But I wanna surprise them. If you wanna surprise them, mute your sound and then visit the room. And you can tell immediately if people are speaking Spanish or doing the English lesson. Or I have no problem if people are speaking Spanish if they're talking about the lesson right? This is a difficult part. Again, so two things. When you put people in rooms, keep, well, three things. Keep the group small. Three. Three is, a, if, I, if I can stay three or under, I'm happier doing that, all right? Why is two difficult? Two is difficult because one person might get disconnected. If they get disconnected, then you have a lot of people who have no partner, right? Three is safe. Four is nice. I don't know, depending on what you want to do, I would never do five. Never. Five is going to create chaos, and five people can just not pay attention. So three is my magic number. And then make sure people know what they're gonna do ahead of time. And then also when you go to the breakout room, 
People cannot see you. They cannot see the original classroom. So what do you do? You need to tell people, take a picture of this thing, right? So let me go back and show you what I was doing here. Let me share screens again if, um, really quickly here. All right. So share screen. All right, going to the, this one here. Here's my PowerPoint. So if you look at this, this one that I did, if you go back, you see how I have here, please take a photo of what's happening. All right. So there's a, there's a photo of a, a man taking a photo. And it says, please take a photo or a screenshot. And if your students don't speak much English, put it in Spanish or put the symbol of the photo. Your students are, you're new to Zoom, they are new to Zoom also. You're new to online, they're new to online. Don't confuse the fact that your students have a telephone and, and know how to do a lot of uh, you know, um, electronic things because they're young. Don't confuse that with knowing how to, to be in a classroom online, not the same thing. So take the photo. Now, what else could I do? Now, what I did, you see, can everybody see here where it has played these, can everybody see my mouse is moving? Pilar, can you see the mouse moving on the screen? Yeah, okay, all right. Why do I have these words here? Now, I can't see you and you can't see me, but I can send you a message. So what I did was, after you went to the rooms, I copied this, I just copied, and then I went to, the, to my thing and said, I can send a message to everybody. I sent a message that said those words. Now, one other possibility, if you, if you know how to use Google Docs, you can use, I, I'm not, I'm, I know how to use Google Docs, I'm not super good with it yet. So if you know how to use Google Docs, you can create a Google Doc and then give the link, you can put the link in the chat room. So lots of ways. But for me, I like the photo, it's very safe. All right, so here's what I would do. I would say for me, the best word is the word need. I would teach need, why? I'm gonna, okay, now, all of these are possible. Now, I know like, so, uh, Pilar was, uh, so Pilar was talking about how you have kindergarten kids. Kindergarten kids can't read. So if the, if the student can't read and you say played, they will repeat played. If you say washed with a T, they'll repeat washed. But people who can read, fourth grade, elementary and higher, adults, high school students. If I ask my high school students, you see this list over here? Read this list. I will now be a Panamanian student who's learning past tense. Play it, wrong. Added, correct. Wash it, wanted, sign it, rain it, rob it, dye it, study it, need it, cook it, show it. Now, I mispronounced. That's, that's not correct. Which one is correct? Which one do you say? Which one looks like the way you, you read it? Number two is possible. Added. Number four is possible, wanted. Number, what else? Number 10 is possible, needed. All of the others, play changes to played with a D, right? And then wash changes to wash with a T. I would choose those words, that's what I would do. I would choose needed because need, every student, if you ask any high school student to read the word needed, they will probably read it correctly, accidentally, right? accidentally. So what would the exercise look like? I want to show you one last activity today. So, um, so of course you can do something like this. The student just writes need, needed, want, wanted. This is not a, a special activity. This PowerPoint, Joelle will be able to give this to you as well. All right. But um, if you don't like grammar, like you don't like, I don't want to use present and past. I don't want to use grammar labels. If you don't want to use grammar, the names, don't use it. Just call it every day and yesterday, because that's what it is. So for Pilar, who's teaching, for example, uh, kindergarten, kindergarten kids don't want to know present and past. They might understand every day. They might understand yesterday. Again, not how to read it. All right, now here's an activity. Find the word that is past tense. In number one, what's the past tense? So ra raise your finger, one, two, or three. One for need, two for visited, three for repeat. Which one is past tense in number one? Yep, so in number one, it should be the word visited, has the ED, right? What about number two, wanted, subtract, wait? Which one's past tense? Should be number one, wanted. In number three, weights, counted, attend. Should be number two, it has the ED. Now you might think, let me give you the answers. These are the answers. You might think this is really easy. 
it's easy for you, it's easy for me, because we know English. But to a person who's just beginning with English, I'm trying to teach my students not to say it, not to produce it, just recognize it. That's all. Can you just recognize it, all right? So here's an activity for you. Joelle, I don't know if we have time. Uh, can, if, can, if people can, because we started late, if people can stay like 10 extra minutes, is that possible? I know some people might have to go. Joelle, what do you think? Yeah, we, we, we could continue on uh, 15 more minutes. Okay, okay, I'll try. I'm sorry, everybody, but Zoom, Zoom was not my friend today, okay? So here's what everybody, everybody knows blue jeans. So I want you to imagine I'm teaching this class to high school students. I didn't know today if you're in elementary or middle school or high school. Middle school or high school or adults, you know jeans. So everybody, I'm going to give you a test about jeans. The test is going to have three questions. I want to see if Pilar or Anna or Eduardo or Norma, who can get 100% on today's exam about blue jeans. Good luck, everybody. All right. So here's what I'd like you to do. You have a sheet of paper. You have a small piece of paper, everybody. Just make a note. There are only three questions, three questions, and it's multiple choice. This is an easy test, maybe. I'm making it easy for you. A, B, C, D, or E. Three questions, five choices about blue jeans. Nobody use Google, all right, to check the answer. And I'm gonna go quickly so you can't use Google. Question number one about blue jeans. Now, are you ready? Why do I have, all right, this is teacher to teacher. You see, I have the blue jeans. And I don't, I'm the teacher. I'm talking to you as a future teacher or a real teacher using this. I don't remember what the next thing is. I don't want you to see the question. I don't want you to see the answer. If I do this and it has the answer, I've ruined my activity. It's, it's gone. I can't take it back. So what do I do? You see this thing, are you ready? Because in English, we call this to make it idiot proof. Even an idiot like me cannot make a mistake. Why? I put, are you ready? And sometimes I'll put another one that says, are you really ready? And that tells me the next slide has the answers maybe. But it tells, it tells me, it says, Keith Foles, do not go to the next screen quickly, right? Because I don't want to reveal the answers. Okay, here's your first question. All right, a man named Levi Strauss created blue jeans. Where did Levi Strauss create blue jeans? Levi Strauss created blue jeans in Austria, China, England, Germany, the United States. So on your paper, A, B, C, D, E, write, the correct, write what you think is the correct answer. In which country did Levi Strauss create blue jeans? All right, question number two. Question number two, when, what year? When did Levi Strauss create blue jeans? Levi Strauss created blue jeans in 1853, 1873, 1893, 1923, 1943. I'm wearing blue jeans right now. What is the history of my blue jeans, okay? <laughs> when did my blue jeans begin? This is a little difficult. You got it? Eduardo, you think you know the answer? Yep, okay. <laughs> All right, last question. Who used the first blue jeans? Was it farmers, railroad engineers, miners, teachers, or factory workers? So Levi Strauss, in some country, in some year, made blue jeans for some people. Which people? Anna's thinking very diligently here. Okay, Anna, I have confidence in you, Anna. All right, Pilar wants some more points. I know, it's okay. Oh, here we go, guys, ready? All right, now, check your answers. Now, of course, I can, I, can say, I can say number one is B, number two is B, number three is B, but no, I want you to check the answers. Here's how you're gonna check the answers. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you five slides. These five slides are beginning level English. Beginning level English, and each slide has the story of blue jeans. So I want you to, I'm gonna, there are several ways. Here's the first one. I can read it or you can read it, but I'll read it out loud. Now, sometimes the answer is here, sometimes it's not here. What are jeans? Do you have blue jeans? Many people have blue jeans today. Do you know where blue jeans came from? In 1853, 
a young man from Germany started working in San Francisco, California in the United States. His name was Levi Strauss. One of the questions is answered here. Next one. At that time, many people traveled to California. Thousands of people hoped to discover gold. I put the word in Spanish here. If I were teaching low level students, if you don't know the word gold, that's a problem. So I just put the word oro. For this reason, thousands of people moved to California. People there looked for gold. Sometimes they discovered a lot of gold. Many more people wanted to work there. Levi had a special store. He sold canvas, which is lona, to miners. The miners used the canvas to make tents. All right, next one. One day, Levi learned that the miners had a problem with their pants. Their pants were not very strong. They needed very strong pants for the hard work in the gold mines. Levi decided to make some pants from canvas. People really liked Levi's new pants. These pants were perfect for the miners. They needed, sorry, mistake, I should say they really needed, my, my mistake, bad typing, sorry. They really needed these new pants. Number nine, there was one problem. The canvas was very heavy. Levi needed a new material. He found a material from France. It came from the city of Nîmes in France. People called it Serge de Nîmes. In English, this name is material from Nîmes, because Nîmes is a city in France. This French name was difficult. So many people changed the name to Denim. They didn't call it Serge Denim, just Denim. Today we call that material denim. That's why we have the English word denim. Denim means from Neem. The original denim was white. This was not good for work pants. Nobody wants white pants at work. Levi Strauss wanted denim that was not white. He selected a new color. The new color was dark blue. Why dark blue? He liked dark blue. The miners liked the dark blue color. The miners needed really strong pants. In 1873, Levi added small pieces of metal to the side of his pants. You know, if you have a pair of Levi's jeans, on the, on the side, by your leg, on the side, there's a small metal thing, and one over here, like a little button, and that's what makes Levi pants Levi's. Now the pants were very strong. 15, this is how Levi Strauss invented jeans. Now you know why Levi Strauss selected dark blue for the pants. This is why your jeans today are dark blue, not another color. And we're all happy because we have jeans. All right. Now, now check your answers. So where did Levi Strauss create blue jeans? Put your fingers, one, two, three, four, five. Levi Strauss created blue jeans in which country? One, two, three, four, or five. Which one? A, B, C, D, E. Should be number, yep, should be number five, the United States. Do you remember where he was from? He was from Germany, but he went to the United States because he was because they had gold. Everybody was trying to go for gold. All right, question number two. When did Levi Strauss create blue jeans? Levi Strauss created blue jeans in, and the answer is not 1853. The correct answer is 1873. 1853, he went to San Francisco. 1873. So 20 years he was working before he discovered blue, not, before he invented, he invented blue jeans. And question number three, everybody, good luck. Who used the first blue jeans? This one was a very difficult one for me. Yeah, far, yeah, should be number two, uh, should be C, the, the miners. Not the farmers, it was the miners because people in the mine needed really strong pants. And that's why he used, remember the word for lona? How you, remember how you say the word lona in, in English? Remember what, what letter, what letter does it start with? Let, so lona starts in English with the letter C, starts with the letter C there. Canvas, canvas was the word. Now, we practice, you can say, okay, Keith, it's a grammar class, but we practice reading. Yes, but did you notice that reading was filled it was llenísimo. It was filled with verbs in ED. I want to show you the story of blue jeans. Can you find the EDs? Look, only one. This page. How many EDs? How many, on, on question number two, how many ED words do you see? I see one, two, how many? I 
I think seven. You find seven also maybe? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm going very quickly now because I, I, we're past the time. But with my students, I would do this much more slowly, much more sl slowly. And I would tell them, for example, I would tell my students, find seven, find seven. Tell your students the number, all right? Because when people know the number, they know, they know what to look for. Because if I think there are three, I find three and I stop. No, no, not three. And I ask them, how many did you find? I found three, I found four. Nope, keep, keep looking, keep looking. All right, let's try another one. How many can you find here? Just find the ED. Okay. Anna, I see Anna. Anna, how many do you find? I think I found five or six. We found six. Learned, needed, decided, liked, needed, needed. There are six, well, four different verbs, but six times. All right, how many here? You guys, am I find four or you find five? Let's see what the answer, we have four, all right? And last one, last one here. So how many, you tell me the answer. So one. Oh, anybody, what do you think? I see some people writing things in the chat. Okay, I think I found four. Uh oh, five. Sorry, my mistake. There's five. Liked, needed, added, invented, selected. Now, let me say this. I am. Not, think about this. Before I ask any students to produce something, I just maybe want them to try to recognize it. Can you? This is not a hard task. If you have eyes and you know the letter E and the D, you can find these. So students who don't know past tense so well yet can do this activity. And also as a teacher, I'm telling you, teacher to teacher, I wrote this story and I'm giving the PowerPoint to Joelle and you, you're happy, you're welcome to use the story. Um, change it, make it harder, make it easier, whatever you wanna do. But um, if I create an activity, I don't wanna use it one time. I wanna use it two times or three times. So I can use this for grammar. I can use it for listening. How would I do for listening? Listening would be, I would go back and I would say, okay, here's number four. I said, okay, now listen, I'm going to read number five. And I would read number five. Okay, what did you hear? And then show you number five. So you can do listening, you can do reading, you can do many things here, all right? So one problem is pronunciation. So for Spanish-speaking students, this pronunciation is really difficult. Watch becomes watch it. You know, people say watch it, but it's not watch it, it's watched, right? Watched. So how are we going to deal with this? So of these verbs here, some of them have d, like sneezed, some have a t, like coughed, and mm -hmm. some have an id, like added. And if this is an activity you can do with your students, here are six verbs, oh, sorry, sorry, 12 verbs, and have the students decide which ones are blue, which ones are red, which ones are green. Now, I will ask you, teacher to teacher, how many of these should be green? How many of these actually are pronounced id? If I'm a Spanish speaking student, tell me how many do I have correct now? Robid, cooked, arrived, wished, subtracted, snowed, chopped, graded, reviewed, bragged, persuaded, sighed. Sigh is a, I un suspiro, I think is what it's called. But um, anyway, the point is of those 12, I think only. Two are correct, maybe? Which ones are correct? Let's see which ones are green. Three, three, sorry. Subtracted, graded, and persuaded. All right, I do wanna share with you this. Here's the answers that we have here, and how will you teach this to your students? Here's the rule. Now, some of you know a rule about voiced and voiceless sounds, and that's good for you to know as the teacher, but I, don't, I usually don't talk about voiced and voiceless with my students, because students don't wanna know about voiced and voiceless. There's an easier way. For me, this is the easier, easier way. If it ends in a d or a t already, like add, added, subtract, subtracted, all right? If it ends in s, f, like missed, 
laughed, uh, clapped, kicked, watched, and washed, and all the others take a duh sound. I know I did this very quickly here, so I know we're short on time, but my point is there, there's this, to me, this is a much easier way to do this. Now, Pilar, Pili and others were in kitchen kindergarten. In kindergarten, what do you do? Find songs, in middle school, find songs that have ED a lot in them. Students might want to sing the song that has the ED in it. So where is this information? So Joel mentioned earlier about I've written all these textbooks. Today I want to just, I'm going to end the in today's talk by uh, two different books of mine. One is called The Grammar Answer Key, and Joel, Joel, Joel has a copy of this. He can get a copy for you if you want to get a copy. It's 100 questions that students ask, or 100 mistakes that students make, plus very simple explanations, okay? There's that one. And then I also recently, I have a new book. And Joel, this book is not, this is only online, so it, okay. this is a new one. Uh, but if you want to, if you want to know about grammar, about pronunciation, teaching vocabulary at all levels, the grammar answer keys are really a book, a good book to get. And then the Zoom book is something new. In fact, I haven't yet. I don't, Joel, I think you didn't even know about this book yet, maybe. But I wrote a book about Zoom because the Zoom books are not for teachers; they're for business people. And they talked about clients and sales, sales meetings. I don't go to sales meetings. I don't have clients. I have students who are in a classroom. So I'm sorry I used up all the time, okay? <laughs> but I'll leave this up here. If anybody has some questions you wanna ask and you can stay, I know it's, we're past the time already, but I'm happy to stay if anybody wants to ask a question. Joel, it's all yours, sorry. All right, okay, let's see if we have questions. Please open your mic. Let's see if we have uh, three to four questions. And I also want to share that we also have, uh, you have this book that is, is a key. Do you see this? Yeah, uh, yeah that's, yeah. The, the, the red one? Yep. This is the one that for me is the Bible for teaching grammar. Mm. I love it. So if there is any question, this is Keys to Teaching Grammar to English yep. Language Learners. It has students book and a workbook and the, 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 the practical handbook. So if there is any question, please let us know. Please open. Uh, we are going to share with you because it's been recorded. And we're going yep. to share with you the PowerPoint and the, the recording uh, sent an email. Uh, or probably we will have your email registration here. Uh, or if not, please send an email to, um, um, I, let me type here, assistente, assistente, dot let's at Gmail Panama. Yeah. So any question, any question, you have any question? Any question for Keith? Keith, I wanted to ask you a question. Um, yep. Questions, yeah. What is your suggestion in order to, you know, for, for elementary students and high school students? Do we have to reinforce the same verb verses or according to the level that they are taking classes, we have to increase the, the, the tenses? What do you recommend? Well, actually, so, so really the question you're asking is which verb tenses are important. In, and I can't speak for Panama, in some countries, in Japan, for example, in Japan, the government decides that which, what you will learn each year. So teachers have to teach that list. The teacher doesn't have any input about what to teach. So um, in Japan, it's a different question. But in Panama, if you can choose, I would really focus, for me, I like grammar, I love grammar. I like vocabulary more. If I could choose between the two, how can we combine those two? So, I would not worry about the 12 verb tenses. Some of those verb tenses, we almost never, the same in Spanish, like, uh, um, um, what, habré uh, estado uh, comiendo cuando llegas. Who talks like that, right? It's a verb tense. But please don't confuse the fact that the verb tense exists with the fact that we should teach it or not teach it. I would never teach that to anybody. So what I would say is concentrate on simple present tense, simple past tense, the modals, can, could, should, may, might, must, and then two others. I would do present pro uh, uh, progressive. It is raining now, I am talking to you now, and then also present perfect. I have eaten lunch already, I have talked to you many times. I would, I would concentrate actually really on those four tenses plus the modals, because that's the most common. Um, and then instead of teaching more grammar about more verb tenses, I would concentrate on helping students learn more verbs, more vocabulary. Like, how do you say evitar? 
how do you say practicar? How do you say, you know, whatever it is, you know, durar, to last, right? How do you say these things? So I would concentrate on more on vocabulary. That's what, and, and I would stop trying to teach all those verb tenses when we don't need that, all right? So I saw, so I saw some about phonics. So phonics. So yeah, if you're teaching younger learners, for example, when do you put, when do you put a, a, a T, a T sound? After six lengths, after F, uh, like, like after F, laughed. Kiss, kissed. Uh, clap, clapped, right? Uh, what else? Uh, what the uh, C H S H watched and washed. So what if I had young learners or even I'm teaching students for the first time. So don't, there are six sounds, letters, S C H S H six examples there that take a T sound. Don't teach them together. If I'm teaching kindergarten, I'm going to find five words like, uh, miss and kiss and I don't know, uh, fi find, find five words that all end in S. Find five words that all end in F. Let's take the P. P could be clap, could be hope. It could be wipe, like wipe, you know, clean something. Um, find five verbs that you think are useful for your students that end in the sound of P already. Any verb that already ends in P, like clap, C-L-A-P, and hope, H-O-P-E. The E doesn't, spelling doesn't matter. It's not about spelling, it's a sound. When you hear me say clap, what's the last sound? Phonetics, right? When you hear me say hope, H-O-P-E, what's the last sound? It's still a P. A kindergarten person, even a high school student who doesn't speak English, they don't know that hope ends with E. If I say hope, repeat, they repeat three sounds. <sighs> oh, they, that's what they say. Any verb in English, that's a regular verb that ends in the sound of p will change to t in past tense. So try to find five and five and five. That's what I would do. I would do categories like that. Um, and this is very confusing for students. Why is the ED not ED? Well, who knows why, okay? <laughs> it's a problem. And past tense, you can't speak English. You really can't speak English without knowing simple past tense. You can't, you absolutely cannot. And if you make a pronunciation mistake, if you say like, you don't say cleaned, you say cleaned. Okay, if you say, I cleaned the room, if you only make a pronunciation mistake, a native speaker probably will know what you're saying. But if you make a pronunciation mistake, and at the same time, you make a grammar mistake, for example, I, um, um, there was a, a, dirty, a dirty, dirty table. I uh, said the word is wash. I washed. I wash the dirty table. I wash the dirty table. But I say, and I don't pronounce the SH. I, I'm a Spanish speaker. I say watch it. I do SH like CH and I put the ed, which is wrong. And I say, I watch it. I watch it. Uh, I watch it the table dirty. What? No, I have no, I have no way. You move the adjective. You made a grammar mistake. You move the adjective to the wrong place and you had a pronunciation mistake. So if, the, if you only have one mistake, pronunciation, or only one mistake, grammar. People can understand what you're saying. But when you have two mistakes near each other, no one knows what you're saying. Say it happens to me in Spanish all the time. I'll say something like, what? The word today I learned was uh, vegano, vegan, right? Is that right? That's how you say vegano? Because I was saying vegano, vegano. And they're like, what, what? And I said, I said, I said something like, something blah, 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 soy, I'm, I'm not, mi, 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 mi. I said something like, Mi amigo, mi amigo son, like, mi amigo son, what? But I said, I kept saying, vegano, vegano. And they're like, what are you talking about? Oh, oh, vegano, oh. Yes, that's what I said. No, that's not what you said. <laughs> yeah. Any, so the veggie. Any, cool. any, any other question? Any other question for Keith? Um, you can open your mic. Yeah. Any other question, Lord, or you can type here in the box. In the, in the Lord, box. Lord, I saw Lord, Lord is thank you. I agree, Lord is. This is you probably you want to go back and study this a little bit, um, because today we did a lot. So we did we did verb tenses in general a little bit. We did uh, simple past tense, not the irregular. We just did regular. We didn't talk about irregular. And by the way, my verb that I would teach for irregular, the first one will be go changes to went, because it's really irregular, and in English. You cannot, like, if I'm having conversation, every conversation is about fui, 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 or something. Only fui, 
You're going to use fui and fuiste a lot in conversation in Spanish and in English. So if I teach them go becomes went, that's clearly irregular. There's the concept. This one is ed, ed, ed. This becomes went. So, and also it's a high, teach high frequency vocabulary if you can. That's really important there, I think. All right. All right. Thank you very much. Any other comment or question here? Do we have any other comment or question? Any other comment or question? Any other comment or question? So I'll teach you guys something. When you have a subasta the auction, when you have the subasta and the last person gave five dollars, you say, "Do I hear six? Do I hear six? Do I hear six? The person will say, "The person will say, "Going, going, gone." That's what they'll say. So that's your lesson today. Going, going, gone. So when you ask your students, "What's the answer?" everybody silence, you say, "What?" Is this the answer? Going, going, gone. So almost gone. So yeah, uh, what was it? Melanie, Melanie said this, the SH and CH is very difficult. Yeah, it's very difficult. So if you think about it, which, which sounds, which sounds, CH and SH, which one is easy for Spanish speakers? The CH, because you have, ch, you have CHE, you have that sound, right? So watch is a lot easier than wash. And wish is a difficult word to do. So what I would do is you have those six sounds, S, S. Now, sometimes Panamanians don't pronounce final S. So come lay a poco, right? So in that case, maybe that's difficult. But the F, like laugh, you have F. Clap with a P, you have P. Um, the CH, you have. The SH, you don't have. My point is, then start with the ones that your students are going to have the easiest time. Do words like kiss because kiss has an S and they can pronounce kiss, becomes kissed. Laugh with an F, they can pronounce laugh. Now laugh has a very difficult spelling. The pronunciation of the ED is never about spelling. How you spell it absolutely does not matter. It is 100% based on pronunciation. How do you know this? Um, because there are, there are um, in the United States, there are thousands of people who are 70 years old who cannot read and write in English. There are people here who cannot read and write English. Those people are native speakers of English. It's a minority, okay? But they have never learned to read and write English. So they don't, when you say hope has an ED, they have no idea what ED means. But every native speaker of English will say hoped with a T. They'll say sneezed with a D, and they'll say um, needed with an ID. Every native speaker gets this correct because it's based on sound, a system that's in your head. It's not spelling. Children who are five years old, the, every child knows the word play. If you go to a kindergarten in the United States, the, you ask the, the child, what did you do yesterday? That child will say, I played with Maria. I played with Maria. We played basketball, played. No five-year-old child who speaks English will say play ed. But every adult will say play ed who's learning English, right? Um, because you see the ED is logical. It's sound. So if it ends in s, like miss or kiss, it takes a T. All right. There is one last question here is, what do you, suge what do you suggest to teachers make students speak? What ideas or suggestions you give to teachers to, you know, to, to use grammar in a speaking activity or make them speak? Okay, so a speaking activity. So what, the question is why? Why would a student talk? Also, how can you make students talk? There are two ways. You can say, do this, or I'm going to be angry. Do this, or you lose points. That's, that's possible, OK? And we, we have all had difficult classes where you have to do that. But you're in Zoom now. In Zoom, I don't see everybody. I, can't, I, can't, I can only be in one breakout room at a time. So my suggestion would be very strongly, give students a specific task, specific task. I'll give you an example here. All right, let's see. Um, Okay, the genes, the genes. So that was a good example. I, everybody knows what blue genes are. Give the students the three questions and ask them, the, no story, give them the questions. And your job is, I'm gonna give you seven minutes. Well, you know what? Um, but then they might Google it. If, but if they Google it, they have to know the answer at some point. So have good students, you have seven minutes to find the answer to these questions. Or here's one, uh, put people in groups and I'll say, all right, um, in South America, can you tell me 
the six, uh, what are this, which, what are the six or well, three, what are the three countries in South America or all of Latin America? What are the three countries in Latin America that have the most population? What do you think they are? What are the three, you know, what do you, what, what are the three countries in all of Latin America that have the highest population? Highest population. So I see, okay, so three, three countries, which three? Can you type in the chat? What do you think? What are the top three countries in, in terms of population? Brazil, Mexico. Yeah. Yeah, but but let but uh, Spanish. So you think Chile? You think Mexico? People think Brazil. Okay, I see Argentina. Actually, no. I don't know if anybody has the correct answer. Yeah, I don't know for sure. I mean, I, I don't have my list here right now, but I will tell you a surprise. Uh, if I just do South, just South America, South America. Uh, one country that people forget is Colombia. Colombia is huge, huge population, all right? Um, so my point is, give people, don't say, get in groups and talk about your favorite color. Okay, that's possible. I don't like to do that because, you know what, suppose, okay, suppose Joel and I are learning French. And Joel, we're in the French class. Now, Joel, I like you, you like me, you know me, I know you. I don't care about your favorite color and you don't care about my favorite color. And the only reason we're doing this in French is because the French teacher told us to do it. But I am not intrinsically motivated. I have no motivation for this because it's not interesting. I don't care about your color. I just want to talk about my color. I want you to care about my color. Okay. So give students when students have a very specific task, for example, give them a list of, um, so how, I don't know, how many, how many departments or states does Panama have? What's, how many states or, or departments are there in Panama? Provinces, provinces. Pro provinces, how many provinces are there in Panama, sorry? 10? 10, okay, 10. If there, I don't know, so if there are 10, then give the students a list of the 10 and say, okay, I'm gonna give you two minutes work in three students in groups, and I will say, of, these, of the 10, which, which three, or say, say this, there are the 10. Which two have the most people and which two have the smallest population? Which two have the largest population? Which two have the smallest population? Ready, set, go. Go to rooms, two minutes. When people have a specific thing to solve, now what's the grammar? The grammar practicing is smallest, E-S-T, largest, E-S-T. You're practicing E-S-T, right? Um, so you so for, suppose for example we're doing countries and uh, Joel you say I think I think Ecuador is an, is the answer and I say I don't know I think Peru isn't actually Peru has a lot of people also I think Peru is the answer and then so, and then so maybe like and maybe Gloria Beth says I think Chile is the answer and then Joel you said no no I, I you know I said Joel why do you think Peru is the answer and you said well Peru is more big than Ecuador more big is not correct but now you are practicing the grammar. It's wrong grammar, but I'm okay with wrong. The purpose of speaking practice is not to get it 100% correct. If the students can get it correct immediately, we don't need practice. In fact, they don't need you and you have no job, okay? So when you first practice something, it is logical and expected that people will make mistakes. Mistakes are good. Mistakes indicate progress. So that's what I would say to that. Yeah, get a very specific task. Joel, maybe if we have a, if we have a session again, I can talk about just speaking activities. Of course, we will be happy to have another session. Let's try to book it. Yeah. All right, again, thank you very much. Thank you so much for your time. It's been great. So I think that having you in this kind of conversation in re is, is a way of enrichment. It's a way of growing and learning. And I, I would love to have you in a second, you know, opportunity to speak just about speaking activities. That sure. is going to be great. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you so much for your time, Keith, and providing your um, good energy from Florida. And then um, at the same time, sharing this kind of moments. So um, you have one minute to, to say your last words. 
Okay. Hey guys, just I want to, while we're ending today, thank you so much for coming today. And I'm sorry we went extra time. If you stayed for extra time, you get extra points. I'm giving all the points away today. Okay. Um, you can speak to Joel. Joel can give you something for the points. I don't know, but uh, I hope to really see you guys in Panama one day. This is really unfortunate that we can't do this person to person because the original plan was for me to go to Panama and do something live with real human beings. And of course, we are still all real human beings. We're just not physically together. So I know that you're teaching right now. This is a very challenging time for everybody. It's challenging for your students. It's challenging for their parents, uh, for their family. It's also challenging for teachers. Teachers are real people. We have families also. It's a very difficult time, but any, anything that you can do to help your students stay focused and you know, stay on task, on target, this is a good thing. And I think as long as you know, we help our students feel that it's, it's bad outside, but it's kind of normal, and maybe it's getting closer to normal, uh, this is a good thing. But uh, keep teaching English. And if you have any questions, send me a question. I'm always happy to answer easy questions, okay? Okay, okay, thank you very much. So this is gonna be recorded. I already typed if you wanted to have the, the, the recording. And I will also share with you the, the PowerPoint presentation. Um, uh, please send an email to assistente.let at gmail.com and you will receive that information. Thank you so much for your time and see you in our next webinar. Please thank keep, you. Uh, follow Thanks, us sir. on Instagram and check what's our next webinar that is gonna be great. Keith, again, thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Greetings, greetings from Panama and see you next okay. time. I'll see bye you in bye. Florida, guys, someday, okay? All right. Thank you, guys. Okay. See you guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay. See you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.